What is it that gives an image appeal? Imagine succeeding as a successful female artist at a time when you weren't even allowed to vote. This is Yvonne's story. She was a pioneering photographer who gave us a peek into first wave feminism in England and what it was really like working as a woman throughout the world wars. Yvonne was born in 1893 and grew up in the throes of the suffragette movement, which was found when she reached 10 years of age. Coming from a reasonably well-off family in South London, she was well-educated and informed. Inspired by the photographer of many of the suffragettes, Dana Connell, Yvonne came to realise that photography was to be the profession for her. As an advocate of feminism, she was aware from the very start that to be a woman photographer with a successful career was a resistance in itself. She set to work. Deciding it best to have a female tutor, Yvonne noticed that, as luck would have it, the most popular photographer of the day happened to be a woman. And that woman was Lally Charles, whom she earned herself an apprenticeship with. In 1914, at the age of 21, after some time learning under Charles, Yvonne set up her own photography studio, aided by her family's finances. It was here she shot A.A. A. Milner, author of Winnie the Pooh, among others, she chose to go by the singular name of Yvonne, or Madame Yvonne. Ridding herself of a surname allowed for her to detach herself from ideas of marriage, and thus asserting her independence at a time that this was seen as improper. As the First World War was in its entrance, she continued to work. Most of her time, however, like the majority of the Brits, was taken up working. She joined the Women's Land Army, farming and producing food. The portraits produced in this period provide a not so often visited angle on World War I, humanising and illuminating the crucial work done by the women who stayed at home. In Self Portrait as Harlequin, one of her early works, Yvonne poses introspectively, ambiguously sorrowful or simply weary. The figure of the Harlequin presents an androgyny. Yvonne embodies this as she vamps to terms with working in a historically male industry particularly if we think of the male gaze from behind the camera to the subjects in front. This advert for Lanoline is a rose-tinted perspective on life during the war years. We can see the influence of paintings in art history as the subject sits at her toilette, muddy boots off, softly and almost fondly applying the lanoline after a hard day's work. In service of the image as a product to be consumed, Yvonne's own experience working through World War I is barely hinted at. If it weren't for the uniform slung round the chair, we would be unawares. Though this photo was taken in 1939 to be reproduced, and the glamorised, not to mention coloured image, would have been an extraordinary sight to set one's eyes on at the time, otherwise surrounded with images of horror and war. There's a tension between escapism and reality at play here. Once the war was over, Yvonne's flourishing acclaim caught the attentions of people of high society, the kinds that featured in the pages of Tatler, an upper-class lifestyle magazine in Britain, which, as it turns out, was a frequent supporter of her work. Her women were glamorous, favouring her work with a flattery of their style. One of her most famous works is a series called Goddesses, where she dressed up a series of attendees she took to at a charity ball earlier that same year. They are worth an extensive flick-through. There is rather a lot of material out there on her Goddesses series, so I thought to give it a miss for this video. Though, as always, I have made a roster of resources in the description for you to check. Yvonne did marry in 1920 to playwright Edgar Nettleton. She picked up playwriting herself, which I think corresponds generously to the imagination in her photographs. They are injected with hints of narrative, often due to a surreal element in the picture frame, complementing often theatrical costumes and hair. Yvonne carried on with her professional moniker without a surname. Eight years later, women won the right to vote, a great victory for the cause Yvonne and the suffragettes had been fighting for. It would be a disservice not to delve into Yvonne's colour photographs in this video. The Vivex photography technique was invented in 1928, seeing three coloured negatives embedded into the camera, in turn bringing the hue to images so as to be faithful to life, as well as an added luminescent sheen which gives an otherworldly quality to the images. Yvonne quite rightly saw this as the future. On the subject, Yvonne had this to say. 
Colour photography must develop along photographic lines, but as it has no tradition, only a future. Every print made at present is something of an experiment. She was an artist who believed in new technology. She was pushing the boundaries to prove herself an artist in her own right, rather than an artist who was seen as female first. She experimented with colour gels, painted backgrounds and textural costumes. Sometimes we saw multicolour fish or birds. This portrait of Joan Maud is one of many by Yvonne. The theatre actress was playing Wild Salome at the Savoy Theatre at the time, and Yvonne took to photographing her over the years. She was chosen here for her brilliant red hair, which is matched by an equally candescent red background. Yvonne also shot Vivian Lee, Judy Dench, playwright George Bernard Shaw, actor, musician, activist Paul Robeson, Marcel Marceau, and the rest. This amazing staged photo of two newspaper vendors in Fleet Street shows us a lesser seen scene of the newspaper ecosystem. The photographer shoots the images to the reportage, the paper is printed, the vendors collect the money and distribute the papers. Choosing female subjects for this harkens back to her suffragette days and the sharing of flyers and other types of alternative information outside of the usual media circuit from woman to woman. Zines and alternative media remain today an important act of resistance one thing to note on the oeuvre of Yvonne is the few working class subjects depicted. She no doubt has her wealthy clients to thank for her long career, which equally allowed her to complete her fine art pictures alongside her commercial career. Equally, without her parents' funding, she would not have been able to open her photography studio in the first place. Yvonne embodies the paradigm of first wave feminism and its privilege of middle to upper class white women who had the social and financial means to fight for women's rights. We remain indebted to them today, though it is important to acknowledge there was still very far to come at this point in time. Do leave a comment if you would be interested in profiles on the second, third and or fourth waves of feminism on this channel in the future. We can end this discussion with Yvonne's self-portrait with Vivex one-shot camera. Having taken the odd self-portrait throughout the years, this one from 1937 is perhaps the most typical of Yvonne's photography style. She looks straight into the lens and therefore at us with a bright satin blue emanating from behind her, darkening into a vignette, which frames her in the photo. The camera rests on top of Herbert Reed's art now. She presents herself to us as artist. Yvonne had both technological prowess and a penchant for beauty, but overall it is clear as a viewer that she had fun. Her body of work leaves us with images that invoke play, laughter and conformity. This has not been the story of a woman's life, but the story of a photographer that happens to be a woman. <laughs>